Welcome to the Look It's Rock and Roll podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. Today we've got Lonnie. Hello. We've got Ken. Hey. And Mark. And last Hello. episode, we put it to you, listeners and viewers of the show, to select our next episode. And Mark came up with Genesis. Lonnie came up with Velvet Revolver, the first album, the only one worth listening to. Um... Ken came up with Love Drive, and I don't even remember what I suggested. Um, it didn't get any votes. It got fewer votes than Genesis. but uh, And it wasn't Zodiac Mind Warp, so th there we go. Oh, yeah, it was Rock City Angels. Um, so everywhere people voted on Facebook and on the Kiss FAQ message board, they chose Love Drive by the Scorpions. So that's going to be what we discuss this episode. And in second place, a clear second place, and it was actually pretty close, uh, Velvet Revolver, which uh, I look forward to us talking about next month because that, that, really, that was really fun. But for now, we're going to get into the Scorpions. Love Drive released, what was it, uh, February 1979? Yeah. Was their first post-Uli John Roth album. Michael Schenker had been kicked out or left UFO and had come back into the fold, but they'd also hired another guitarist at the same time, Matthias Jabs. Or Jabs, I guess, if it's German. Yabs. I don't know. Jabs. 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 Um, so, for this album, they had a three-pronged guitar attack. And Michael's not on every track, but uh, it's pretty clear the ones that he is on. Let's talk about everyone's <clears throat> introductions to the Scorpions. Lonnie, when did you first experience them? You know, what were the first songs or albums? And, you know, where do they kind of fall into your your life soundtrack? And uh, do you buy their albums? Um, you know, my introduction to the Scorpions came off of FM radio, which, you know, most people my age bracket, I guess, would, would attend to, um, you know, local rock station here would play Rocky like a hurricane, things like that. Um, so I was aware of them. And then in the summer of 96, that magical summer of 1996 that we always <laughs> reference, um, I saw the Scorpions at a shed show in St. Louis, um, co-headlined with Alice Cooper. Um, I was working at a, at a golf course at the time, and um, one of my buddies there, his girlfriend worked for the amphitheater, and she was able to get us free tickets, like lawn seats for, for shows that would come in. So, you know, any of the rock shows, you know, me and my buddies, we, yeah, we'd go. So it was Alice Cooper. I'm like, oh, it's great. I've never seen, I, at that point, I hadn't seen Alice. So I was, I was excited. Um, so I went and saw Alice, and, and, I, and I loved it. It was just fantastic. And Scorpion's headline, and I, I was surprised as I was watching them that I knew as many songs as what I did during during the show. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize it was them. Like, and I went in the big city nights. I'm like, oh, I know everybody knows this song. You know, like oh, I didn't realize it was them. So, um, so, so that was my introduction to them. Really, was, was seeing them live. Really, um, and it made me go out and buy um, Live Bites and Pure Instinct, which was the album they were touring touring for at the time. Was Pure Instinct. Um, so that was my introduction to them. And then, you know, I've gone by. But like the best of uh, 20th century, you know, masters, whatever those editions were, you know, Kiss did like three of them. But so was my introduction to them, you know, and I, they, they were a fun band back in the day. And, you know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed listening to this this week. Cool. Glad to hear it. Mark, what about you? Since you'd come up with Genesis, this is about the opposite end of the spectrum on that group of albums as you could get. <laughs> okay. Well, first, let me preface this by saying that the Genesis selection was under duress because i was kind of thinking what to pick so i didn't know i just the first thing that came to my mind it was like okay genesis genesis but genesis I, the first thing that comes to your mind really no well yeah i mean <laughs> you know they're actually they're I, band, I, really. i'm sorry off the, off the top of your head i would have expected king crimson right well genesis? yeah i mean i don't know it, like i said it was just under it was kind of like an under pressure decision but in any in any case um this uh, entry point for Scorpions actually, surprise, surprise, was once again my older sister Jane. She had uh, Blackout, 
the album. She actually had, uh, I believe, uh, No One Like You on 7-inch. I think she had it. Uh, but I clearly remember Blackout uh, playing in our in our apartment. Uh, and I also remember the guys downstairs that lived in the floor below us. The one guy had a jean jacket cut off sleeves and he had the album cover back patch on his jacket. They were they were pretty big at that time around there. Uh, and again, it, it's interesting. Those guys were kind of like the coolness gauge in our block of the city there. Because, uh, you know, when they when the records came out, like, you know, like, uh, like Love It For Sting and all those records, they were all like, yeah, so ultra cool. But then when, you know, Crazy World came out, they're like, uh, they're starting to sell out, man. You know, and you, you could already hear like, you know, things like that ha- circling around when they were making records later on. But uh, the entry point was clearly uh, Blackout. And then, uh, yeah, from there, I just kind of hopped on because I thought they were very good myself. And I started getting them on cassette. I got into them, or I didn't. I don't know if I really got into them in the '80s. It was MTV, <laughs> and it was this album, Live Worldwide, and those videos were on. And MTV would play all the videos up to that time, um, particularly the live ones and the stuff from Love at First Sting. Um, I, I wouldn't say I got into them. Um, I was later given Virgin Killer, and that was a completely different band that I preferred. So I went backwards and discovered the 70s output from the band, and I'm firmly rooted in listening to stuff like Taken by Force and the Tokyo Tapes. And, you know, that's the, the stuff I really like the most from them. I did get to see them in 1999 on the Eye to Eye tour with Motley Crue. And, yeah, I checked out, I'd long checked out by then, and I was just happy to hear a few of the greatest hits from them uh, at that show, so that that was essentially it for me you know i i've never gone back and bought the albums after um savage amusement and i've had no interest in catching up with them since is ken hmm. frozen or is he just really sitting still yeah that, that tour in 99 motley crew was really I was good to think if year. i saw that i don't think i did yeah actually i w- saw i'm surprised i saw them much earlier than you guys did i saw them in 90 when they came came for crazy world here in Ontario, it was them, uh, Great White, uh, a couple of other bands. In it, but it was it was a big, huge production, like stage show that they did then. But what really bugged me was they they, they opened up with like you know with the the typical song like Tease Me, Please Me, and all those songs, and then they started playing a bit of the older stuff, and then they started playing a bunch of shit that I had no clue like that they were that they were you know were from their catalog, probably from an era that I wasn't too familiar with. And they stayed like Rocky, like a hurricane, till like two and a half hours after they had started. And it's like, finally, thank God. Like, people were waiting for it. You could just literally see people by that point, like in their chairs, like, okay, when are they going to play it? And then finally they played it. And then everybody like was like, okay, yay. And then that was the end of their show, pretty much. There's one song I do like to riff out on, on guitar to, and that is The Zoo. And that, and that yeah. is the, that is the only Scorpion song that I'll even attempt. I'm not even going to edit this stuff out. Ken, you you froze up and dropped off on a Skype update. Probably. I don't know what it was. Just well, spin. you're back. You're back in time to tell us why did you pick Love Drive, <laughs> and what did the Scorpions mean to you that you would choose one of their albums? Explain yeah. yourself. Explain myself. Yes. <laughs> um, so. Originally, and the, the the way I first heard the Scorpions was, um, I was going to I went to Tower Records, and uh, I was went there and I saw this album. It was brand new, just came out right on the new album, you know, aisle or whatever, and uh, it was it was Blackout. And I was like, "Oh, Scorpions Blackout!" That's awesome. We're good. And then I thought, "Wait a minute, there's a there's a song I've been." looking for and i thought it was blackout but there's a song called breakout by another band called shooting star and i thought oh th- is this it? this might be it this might be it because I, I thought this sounds great they never said who played it so i ended up buying that album never hearing the scorpions before and i brought it home i'm like i hear blackout it was the first song on the album and it's like that's not the song but but this is good. This rocks, you know. And then again, then it went through, and I heard uh, 
you know, uh, no one like you. It's like, well, song after song, and like, oh, like, that's a this is a great song. No one like you. It, I hadn't heard it on the radio yet, and I listened to FM. I listened to it all the time. So I heard it before I heard it on the radio, uh, and so that was that was my introduction. So I, after that, I started looking into them more um, based on that. And then one of the first albums I bought was Love Drive, you know, just based on, I don't know if it was the, I think it was covered up or it was the alternate version because they, you know, they changed it to where you cannot see the cover. And we'll go over that later. But uh, this album, Love Drive, is, I, I just I just always loved it. Um, it has a great, great rockers and it, it's the first album where they you know like you said julian they left rca records and then joined mercury records at that time and they, they changed their sound which has become what they call the classic scorpion sound um melodic songs and and uh, always some you know power ballads mixed in with it and they're probably one of the first bands to come up with power ballads as far as i can tell because that was 79 that's pretty early for that kind of song but uh yeah that was it and i just this is one of the albums that i i love a lot uh i like a, a couple other ones a lot too but uh, that one is or this one is is really good it ranks up there with me yeah well this one is kind of uh the second for me anyway it's the second album in, in a four album stretch where they're very strong obviously taken which i mentioned this is followed by animal magnetism and they toured with Leopard, and then, of course, Blackout, so, or I've got those ass backwards, I always lose track, but, um, Mark, what are your uh, overall impressions of this album, and the things that you generally like and dislike, or dislike? Um, it, it I've had a really interesting time with this record, I'll be completely honest, because um, <clears throat> back in the days when I had these all on cassette, uh, like just to preface this also to say that my exit point from Scorpions was Face the Heat. When that album came out, I was like, oh, okay, now they're starting to lose me with these ballads and all this stuff. They're trying to repeat Wind of Change and all this stuff. And Alien Nation, that song was kind of like, oh, they're starting to, you know, they're starting to follow others instead of doing their own thing at that point, right? Uh, but when I listened to this record, what hit me right away, and this might be you no, know, you know, nerd alert here. Uh, produce from the producer end of things, I thought that it totally reminded me of Dieter Dirks, the producer. His sound is all over this album. Like that drum sound that they have on this record is the same drum sound they had for like every record that he did with them, pretty much. And the guitar sounds have always been good. I always thought that they had good rhythm guitar sounds i think at, at one point actually I, I think that their guitar sound was a little bit of ahead of the time i think a little bit they they sounded a little bit you know a little heavier than what was going on at one point and then i think everybody started catching up at one point because it's funny that around blackout i know that they they signed with q prime management which is the same management that took metallica to stratospheres there and a lot of other bands with them so they were seeing something was catching with scorpions around that period and they were correct because in love for sting came and all those other records that shot through the ceiling with them but it's funny i know that you said julian that there's like a four stretch of records here that you really enjoy with it and i can see that but what I find listening back with these records now is that I find, and don't kill me for saying this, I find that these records don't have as much impact now than as they did when I was younger. To me now, these guys almost kind of remind me a little bit like a German Scorpion, a German ACDC, sorry, uh, because it's almost like from record to record, I knew what to expect. Like the, the, the sound didn't really change much with them record to record to record from this point on and i always found that it was interesting that michael shanker joined back on this record uh because you know like you said you can hear when he's in there playing and i remember reading a great article from Matthias yav saying that they it took a lot of negotiating to get him back in the band because he was pissed off that they got him out and brought michael in for this 
And then after when Michael decides, oh, I'm leaving again, guys. And they're like, okay, we can, you can come back, Mateus. And he was like, yeah, fuck you. I'm not coming back. And they had to literally like negotiate him back into the band. You know? So I don't know. This record, I had a good time listening to it. Um, for some reason, I thought that I would have been more familiar with it than I was. But there are definitely strong songs here. We'll get to that when we get to that point. But um, it's it's good. But I kind of almost lumped this band in now with ACDC, where the the records are good. I can I, I like and I listen to them. But honestly, some of these some of the songs on there, if you were to ask me three hours from now to just recite a melody from them, I they they don't stick as strongly as I thought they would. Wow, interesting perspective. Lonnie, what about you and your overall impressions and likes and dislikes? Um, I was I I never listened to be honest, I'd never listened to this album from start to finish. Like I said, I you know, a couple albums and a greatest hits. I I'd never listened to it from start to finish. So um I was taken back by how many ballad and type ballad type and slow songs were were, were on the album. Um, especially considering how much I enjoyed the the faster and the heavier tunes, so I was I was kind of taken back by by that. But um, it it was it was good, but I, I wish it would have been more more guitar driven than than it seemed like the album was more ballad driven than than my taste really likes. No, fair enough. That's your taste. All right, Ken. Overall likes dislikes. <clears throat> Um, I like the whole thing <laughs> pretty much. There, there's, there's, well, I mean, uh, that's kind of a given. You pick the album. Well, you but... pick the album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and the ballads. Yeah, usually they they're known for having like maybe one to two on every album for sure. This one kind of has, I would say, almost around three. One is kind of you know if we get to it like reggae-ish um, a little bit, um, but uh, they're I mean they're stellar uh, songs, great melodies. Um, you know, I, I don't know. We'll get to the songs, but I, I, I like it. I like the whole thing. I'm just wondering if this is before the Clash went dub. Uh, Sandini yeah, Sandinista came out late 1980, so this is well ahead of the curve in terms of that one that you've just mentioned having a reggae influence. One of my overall likes and dislikes is I think there's a consistency on the album. It works well. It's own. It's very short, only eight songs. Um, the the bonus track edition does have two demos tacked on, which we will talk about at least one of them. So I, I think it's very consistent. I think the production is probably one of the things, and again, that's a separate discussion at the end, but uh, one of the things that struck me the most. It was a, an appealing listen for something that I'm going to have on, just playing on repeat over and over and over to prepare for a show. It wasn't uh, a painful. I, I found the production very crisp and vibrant and it made actually listening to the material enjoyable so it didn't sound dated it didn't make me think wow i'm listening to an album from 1979 um in in no way it, it was mm -hmm. completely fresh very sonically pleasing and then um i think it's best let's jump into the songs and go song by song and then we'll get to our three favorites and least favorite at the end of that um ken why don't you kick us off with loving you sunday morning yeah loving you sunday morning um is a, a really cool song um great melody on it um it has a cool you know breakdown uh with you know guitar solos uh going on in that uh i don't think michael Schenker plays on that one um but it's it's really well done it, he might i know they said at least three songs that he did yeah he uh, does yeah so it, it's it's very good um and uh and even the her trailing out on the song is very good. Um, this just has a great, a great feel to it. It's just a real good melody. Um, I said that before, um, but you know, it kind of goes along, and then the loving you Sunday morning part is just you know awesome. Um, that's the one thing about the Scorpions; they have a lot of great uh, melodic sense in their songs, which is very cool. But it's a good, you know, great start off for that for the album. Yeah, good opening track, Lonnie. Um, I enjoyed the song. You know, obviously it's it's a it's a single. It's, it's something that gets gets some some radio play. Um, I was surprised that the album started with the song, with with "Loving You Sunday Morning." Mm. Um, I thought it would. I thought the album would start with something a little heavier than than what it did. 
But to your point, Julian, it kind of it kind of sets the tone for the album because the album is very consistent um, throughout its duration. Yeah, there there are some heavier tunes mixed in, but it is more of a of a slower type album, in my opinion. But it's a good song. I enjoy it. Um, it's something that, that they do when you see them live. Um, I, I I have no quorums with the song whatsoever. Um, I, I think I think it's a fine song. I was I was I was just surprised it was the the lead track from the album. Well, we'll ask you at the end and uh, remind me which track everyone sure. thinks should have opened I, I have the album or would have been the perfect opener if they don't think sure. this one was. Mark. Yeah, I, actually, I, I find Lonnie's comments rather interesting, actually, because uh, I, I I think that uh, the whole thing. Did she just flip there? <laughs> 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 Sorry, that that that, that kind of distracted me there for a second. Sorry. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, um, lone captivity, and she she fed some food underneath the the slot. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I thought she tripped on something in one no, the door or something. Eat, I haven't eaten anything all day. I was actually, oh. it was an awful day, even though I am at home. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, what I was saying is that uh. I, I'm actually surprised by Lonnie's comments about it being not a heavy song. I th- the first impression I had when I when I slapped this song was like, wow, this is pretty, pretty meaty sounding song to start off a record. You know, I mean, maybe you mean it's maybe not a, as fast paced or upbeat mm-hmm. a song that would maybe open a record. But I remember when I first heard this song, the first thing I did is I grabbed my Strat and I plugged it in. I was like, hey, I, I kind of like this song. And I started figuring out the, that riff there in, in A, and then it goes to C, and I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. So this song immediately took me, and it reminded me right back in the days of my apartment building living. I was like, this this is cool. I, I like this song. So right away, this song hit me. Uh, great riffs, great soloing there. We can tell Michael Shanker's playing in this. It's his style of lead playing in there, right? It, it's it's really good. I think I think personally, it's a, it's a really really good opener for it i mean the, the chorus is very catchy uh and like i was saying before i have i was saying that i wasn't being able to like register and store some of these songs as much as i thought i would this one clicked right away like i can the next day i remember humming that whole chorus in my head in the morning when i came, woke up so this one stuck Nice. My notes on this are pretty straightforward, and uh, I think that guitar intro is the perfect kickoff to this album, because it kind of says this is a, the guitars on this album are very important, and the chording mm-hmm. on that intro is just fabulous. I I, mm-hmm. I don't reach for a guitar for it because I know I'm not going to be able to play it, but uh, you know it is really appealing, and then it kicks into business pretty quickly, so you don't have too mm-hmm. long of fluffy stuff. It gets into guitars. I love Klaus's vocal phrasing throughout mm-hmm. the, the song yeah. and then there's a plethora of guitar and guitar fills all in the right place not too many but just where those little spaces are that need mm-hmm. to be filled so the song's not too busy oh god i sound like this is a cooking show um great <laughs> it's got a really good chorus uh but it's just record a, that later <laughs> yeah it's just a good crunchy chunker is what i call it and it trundles along um and Again, immediately you're getting the production values and you're hoping that they're going to stick for the rest of the album. So nice focus on the guitars, great separation of instruments. So, yeah, uh, but I can't remember the melody to this at all off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. It, it's just, I've enjoyed it every time. Let's move into the hit single from this song, Another Piece of Meat. <laughs> um, Ken, well, let's go back in that order. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, was it a hit? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I find it surprising that they, they, yeah, they would release it as a, a, a single. Um, but this is a, this is one of those songs that, uh, you know, there's a couple of them on here. This one is one of them that is very, you know, faster paced kind of riffing song. Um, I guess the story goes, though, this, this was actually inspired by a, <laughs> I think Herman wrote, wrote, this, wrote this one or wrote part of it. Um, that he came up with a, this because he had met some girl in Japan when they were doing the Tokyo t- t- tape stuff. Uh, and she was like into this uh, kickboxing that they had going on in Japan. Um, and anyway, I guess he said or she said something like, you know, come on, let's go. You're just another piece of meat. Uh, so he thought, oh, you know, he, he immediately... Okay, so that was a great song title, and then he, you know, began to to write it. But yeah, this is a great rocker, you know, fast paced, 
Um, this is a, another Michael Schenker, I believe, guitar solo on this uh, this one. Um, it just it rocks. This is probably the song that you know Lonnie would pick as more like an opener than. You know, well, Lonnie, something. would you? It is. It is. <laughs> I thought the album should have opened with. I thought I, I, I like more of a of a, of a of a heavy tunes to start the album, and I to answer Julian's question from earlier. Yes, this is what I would have picked to to kick off the album. And it's it's very heavy. It's very fast. Very guitar very guitar driven as is, as is the whole album. Um, but you know, and and it's kind of sleazy piece of meat, you know. So I kind of, yeah. I kind of, I kind of like it. I mean, kind of fits with a lot of with other bands that we like. So um, being being sleazy, guitar driven, I like it. I I um, I would have picked it as my opener. It's probably we'll get into it later. It's probably my favorite track off the album. I think it's mm. you know really really re- really guitar heavy for nineteen. 19- 1979. Julian mentioned earlier that you really don't think you don't really don't feel like you're listening to something from from right. 79. Listening to this album, um, it's still very fresh, actually, in my in my opinion. So, you know, and and I guess my opinion really doesn't matter, but I um, I, I feel it's, it's you know I, I like I like the sound of the song I like the sound of the song um, and the guitars on it. So I, I would have picked it as the opener. I think it's great. Okay, fresh meat. I I have on this, you know, that I like that it's not a sexist, misogynistic song. You would think with the title, just another piece of meat, right? That it was going to be horrendously dated, and you know, non PC in this era, and it's not because it's coming from her point of view. So um, that's kind of refreshing. But I love the tempo. It almost feels like you're in a video game, like some uh, uh, anime. Uh, of downtown Tokyo, cars flying yeah. around with the, that kind of uh, sound effects that they have going. Again, I love the I love Klaus's vocals, but I also hear elements of the suite. You know, and mm-hmm. if there was just mm-hmm. a high harmony going right. with one of those vocals, yeah. it, it would have been totally uh, out of that school of kind of structure. But also, the guitar solo is very traditional. That's a very rock and roll guitar solo um, throughout the song. So, Mark. Yeah, um, I, I like this song too. I mean, this this song has an interesting uh, kind of approach to it again, where it's the beginning of it is very upbeat, and then when they go to the verses, they kind of cut it back. They kind of like break it and pull it back down, and the guitar is a little bit more minimal, just a few chords here and there, and it's all Klaus singing. Uh, and I, what I really like about this song is the kind of whammy bar antics at the beginning that Michael Shanker does that. <laughs> thing at the top of like wow that's that's pretty cool because shanker while i know that he has done whammy bar stuff you know throughout his career uh it's not something i've ever thought he was more known for i know he's been known for his use of wah wah pedal and the way he his type of melodic soloing that he does is very unique to his playing uh but i i, I enjoyed that very much uh and some really great high singing by klaus on this song like that whole chorus part is like you know really high i mean if you go to a piano yeah. and try to figure out that high note that he sits and sings in there it's like holy shit that he's singing that in full voice is unbelievable so it's a yeah it's a great song good good opener perfect length for a single too it's like three and a half minutes long so i mean what more could you possibly ask for and the guitars again are very meaty and the i think that's the one thing that makes this album sound heavier because if you were to if you were to solo the guitars by themselves they would still sound pretty heavy, but I think the mix of the guitar with that drum production makes it really, really thick and intense sounding. It's very Teutonic. Mm. I mean, it, it it does sometimes make you think of Panzer tanks, you know, yeah. just, just <laughs> you know, very Germanic, tough. <laughs> so, all right, let's move on into Always Somewhere. I'll get us started on this one. To me, this this was shifting down a few gears, and it's like Knocking on Heaven's Door meets Leonard Skinner. It's yeah. got lots of good parts. It just goes on too long and meanders. So, um, do I like it? It's all right. Um, Lonnie, it's good to you. Kind of the same feeling. Um, I would, after the, after the, the second song being pretty heavy and very guitar driven i was kind of like oh well we're we're slowing back down again and we really slowed down so again it was it's it's fine 
Um, but I was I was a little a little disappointed in the, in the pace of this one. I was hoping for something a little more a little more upbeat than than this one for the third song on the album. And, and to Julian's point too, it's it's a long third song on the album too, and it's just kind of like okay, let's let's get going again here. So to me, it's fine, but it's it's forgettable at the same time. Mark. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think people who know Scorpion's music, when they hear this, they're not surprised that this was coming. Uh, it's sort of, you know, the, the atypical Scorpion's ballad. Uh, you know, the A minor, D minor kind of chording that they always kind of put in, like, with these songs. Uh, and interestingly enough, it's the first song that we have Mateus Yab soloing in. So uh, his solos in there are good, very, very melodic. I mean, he he suits the band perfectly, as we you know come to realize albums on later on. A perfect guy for the band. He solos very well. Uh, but every time you, I hear this song, it, it, it's I wouldn't say that it's forgettable. I just thought, think the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear it is like, okay, this all these songs remind me like it's a rough draft for Klaus for you know wind of change or something or it's it's like he's you know that he's waiting to write that perfect ballad and every record he's attempting to do it until he finally gets to that point because there's so many similarities in their ballads the kind of guitar tones that they use the kind of chords that they use the way they approach their choruses there's there's always that thread in there so it's almost like he's always been writing that one ballad that's going to be the hit for them on these records and this one it's not so bad i mean but i agree it's a little long and, you know, ballads are not usually the thing that, you know, rocker guys are looking forward to when they hear the albums, right? No, but they're changes, change of pace for the artist, I guess. Yeah. Ken? Yeah, well, I mean, this album is the, the first album for this. They were now found their, their formula because if you listen to some of their stuff before that, they didn't do anything like this. I mean, this is a real departure for what they were doing before. Um, they found their in this album their classic sound and then they were pretty much perfected it after the fact you know with the the following albums after that um but this song yeah when i first heard this it's i thought oh man the beginning sounds a lot like simple man of leonard skinner you know uh that opening um which is cool in itself but then it then it goes on its own and you see it's it's nothing you know nothing like uh simple man um but uh where the prior song where, you know, um, Klaus is singing, you know, uh, his high screeching, you know, voice, this one, you can see, he can, he can sing, uh, really sing, sing a nice melodic, uh, and soften his voice to fit the, the song. Um, you know, so he's, he's very good. I think this album, I, I want to say around this time, he had to get vocal cord surgery. I can't remember, but I think it was someone in something around this time period, either maybe it was right after recording it was later. This, or a little bit later. Blackout. And it could have been blackout before blackout. Um, yeah, something like that. But yeah, um, you can see he had to probably, you know, tone it down a little bit because he was really screaming on the other song. But yeah, this is a, a great song. I, I actually it gets the more you listen to it, I think it's it gets better. I, you know, I can hear it in my head, the song still. All right, then, since you're doing so nicely, take us into Coast to Coast, the intru- instrumental. Oh, the instrumental, Coast to Coast. Yeah, so Coast to Coast was uh, a song um, that, um, who is it, not Michael, um, Rudolph came up with, um, and he, he said he couldn't figure out a, a a lyric or, you know, something to put to it, you know, a, a melody, and so... I think he brought it to one of them and said, well, you know, sounds good like it is. And then around that same time, he brought in, that's when Michael Schenker came in. He said, hey, you know, come on, come on down to the studio. We're working on a new album down here. And and that's where it all kind of happened. And then he came to the studio and then he ended up playing on, you know, more songs on the album. But uh, Michael Schenker is the one that actually came up with the melodic kind of uh, melody, a solo that, that kind of happens within the song but i always liked the song i just thought you know it's just yeah it just goes and they didn't figure out, i mean it could have been a great song with lyrics i guess but 
You know, it's kind of interesting to hear a, a instrumental. You don't hear that every day, especially on the Scorpions album. But it's it's very enjoyable song to listen to. Mark. Yeah, well, again, th this song uh, can hit on a very interesting point uh, that Rudolph wrote this with full intentions of it being a song with vocals. Because when I listened to this song and refreshed myself with it, it sounds like a song that desperately wanted lyrics because when you listen to the way it's played, the drum beat is very, like, very mm -hmm. Herman Rarebell, like, simple. Du, 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 yeah. du. It's almost like Vinnie Apice basic drumming, you know? And then that riff at the beginning is so cool. Da, na, 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 and all that stuff happening in there. And then the, the lead work, it, it's perfect Michael Shanker, you know? It, it, it 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 fits so well in there, but honestly, for an instrumental track, I I think that they could have did way more with it. I think that while it's good and I enjoy it, and it's one of the songs that I, I do find memorable because I think Michael Shanker's lines in there are what's make what's what makes it memorable. For an instrumental, I think they should have did and could have did way more with this song. I mean, they could have spiced it up a lot more than they did. But I think the problem was it was recorded with the full intention of it to being sung on and because they didn't do it they didn't go back and rework on it and retrack it and make it they just said okay you know what we're just keeping the basic tracks let's just put leads over top of it and call it done you know uh i'm sorry mike mark it's not yyz <laughs> well no yeah. but i mean still I know, I mean, I know, there's, I know, there's I know. more to it's it than different. just that i think they I, I, know, put. I know i know what you're saying i i you know i agree that uh i i keep thinking that you know they could have probably written a, a nice lyric and a chorus to the song, uh, you know, to sing over it. Um, but I, even though it's like that, I, I liked it as it was. Oh, I like it too. I, yeah, I think yeah. it's one of the ones that are memorable for sure on this record. Yeah. He's playing in concert. You know, I deliberately didn't go back and look up anything about these songs when listening to it because I wanted to have an ignorant point of view, which I often <laughs> do, but, uh, you know, with justification. <laughs> um, but Mark nailed it. When I listen to this, um, it's the Schenker brothers. It should be a guitar war. If he's coming back into the mm. fold, there should be something here. But they should be swinging axes at one another. Instead, it does feel like a song without lyrics. And it's a decent bed track that just is completely unrealized, and it shouldn't be on there. It should not be on there. There's not enough guitar pyrotechnics to call it an instrumental. Instead, it's just four, nearly five minutes of undulating, n going nowhere. It's got no stops. It's got no, you know, real peaks or valleys. It's just kind of, mi it's like a, a sine wave or something. Um, when, if you've got the bonus track edition, if Cause I Love You was actually from these sessions and was not used in its place and that's criminal because one is clearly closer to being finished than the other and that coast to coast shouldn't be on there but is it terrible no lonnie is it terrible no but for an instrumental i agree i was i was looking for something more guitar driven more dueling guitars uh, type of type of instrumental out of the scorpions and not a song that basically seems unfinished to me like okay we got this cool riff we got this cool melody we can't think any lyrics up any lyrics for it but mm, let's throw it on the album anyway it's kind of what it, it's kind of what it seems like other you know than just hey let's do an instrumental i, I think if we were going to say hey let's do an instrumental put it on the album i think it would have been more guitar driven more more dueling guitar type of type of aspect and not what what we got so it's a little it's a little to me it's a little disappointing on, on two avenues one that if we're going to do an instrumental i would hope for a different direction for an instrumental and it's disappointing in the fact that okay we have the song but well handcuff somebody to a chair and make them write some lyrics for it if if you like it that if you like it well enough to put it on the album yep fair point all right let's flip sides First track on side B. Can't get enough. Ken, start us off on that. Can't get enough. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's another. This is the other song that's the uh, hyper uh, paced song uh, again with you know Klaus screaming out the vocals. Um, 
I'm sure I wrote something about it on here. Uh, yeah, fast rate rocker with yeah, exactly what I said. <laughs> I wrote down. <laughs> um, but but it's, it's it's a great song. I don't think yeah, this one's also a Michael Shanker, the great you know another cool guitar solos from uh, from Michael on this one too. Um, uh, no, it's actually the other guy. Really? Yeah. I thought it was Michael, according to my notes. Where'd you get wrong. your information anyway? Anyway. From the, from the internet. The, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I read, I read, I read, I read it mean. online, so it must be true. I don't know. I have to look at my thing again. I, I don't know if I saw it in the booklet or not, but anyway. Um, and it could have been somewhere else. But uh, yeah, I thought it was, as far as I know, it was, it was Michael. According yeah. to my information, I have it that it is Michael. Oh, no, Michael no, you're Mateus right. Actually, actually, you're right. I marked my thing wrong. So. Hmm. You're right, Mark. Oh. I marked in the wrong spot there. A very rare time that the voice of reason is incorrect. I know. Well, you know. <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark but it's time. perfect, Mark. You know. But anyway, <laughs> having said that, it's a it's a great, just a great rocking song. Again, another one. It's a great way to lead off the second side of an album, definitely. <clears throat> um, and it, to lead off a side is is, is usually a, a hard rock or fast pace, but it's just a screeching. You know, I saw. I think so. Uh, I think I read somewhere. Someone said, "Oh, it's just kind of like in a way to similar to maybe the old, you know, Iron Maiden kind of, in a way style." But um, I don't know if that's true or not. But it's a, it's a good song. Nineteen seventy nine. There was no old Iron Maiden. Well, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean. <laughs> All right, Mark. Fresh from correcting the voice of reason, give us your opinion on "Can't Get <laughs> <Yes>. Enough." <laughs> well, I mean. It is definitely a fast-paced rocker, uh, blistering pace. Uh, but, you know, and I don't know if this is one of the things that I found that made me find some of the record forgettable, is that as far as songwriting goes, when I and then when, I, when my songwriter head clicked on, it's very basic. There's like two parts in this song in total and it's just it's a cool riff. But, and luckily it's not a very long song. It's only like three minutes long, I think. And uh, because of that, it it's enough to maybe have two parts, but it's kind of, uh, for me, it's kind of bordering on, you know, it's getting a little dry at this point, hearing that same part over and over and over again. And, you know, it he sings good. He has, a again, a really high screaming voice on this and he sings it fantastically. But I just think, again, one more part, one other little part could have made it, I think, that much better. And maybe with some other soloing, some more soloing in there, some different stuff. Maybe there was just something missing in this song, I thought, that could have gave it that little extra boost. But other than that, I mean, it's a great opening track. And because, like I said, because it's not a long song, you can get away with like a two-part song that's blisteringly fast like that. Yeah, maybe needed a couple of time changes or something just to shake it up a little bit. I like it. Uh, it's like a twin of um, another piece of meat the, with the energy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it feels, in terms of its overall kind of composition style, closer to Taken by Force, like older mm -hmm. Scorpions rather than the new Scorpions that was starting to emerge. So, Lonnie. Again, I like it. I'm right there with you. Um, it reminds me of another piece of meat. I think... It is a perfect song to start side two of the album. Um, you know, saying I think another piece of meat should have started side one. I think this is a great song to start start side two. It's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. Um, it's not long like some of the other some of the other songs on the album seem like they're too long to me. Um, this one almost seems like it's too short to me. Um, I wish it was I wish there was a little bit more of it, but maybe if there was more of it, I would feel differently but it's 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 good i really like it it's guitar driven it's heavy i like i love the vocals on it and i think it's a it's a great way to kick off the second side all right heavy metal goldilocks is is it too long is it too short or is it just right um the next one is there anybody there mm. i love this song it comes at exactly the right placement in the album in terms of the sequencing to have something totally change the pace change the rhythm um, instrumentation, absolutely fantastic. But you know what really stood out for me on this one song? The bass. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. So, uh, winner, winner. Ken? Yeah. Um, 
So it's another great song. I mean, with that reggae feel, uh, you don't really expect it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, like a scorpion's doing something like that, but it it really works. Um, and the other thing about this song is, um, I was reading about it, that it was actually composed like five years before. And they never really used it uh, for, I guess it didn't fit, you know, uh, on this older material. Um, and they thought, oh, this is the right time, you know, let's, let's try this song and see if it works. And it, and it does. It's a real cool song. Um, and like you said, the bass is great in it. And just the whole feel of the song is really cool instrumentation of it. So um, it's a good one for me. It's, you know, it's ballady. Yeah, but it's, it's still good. Mark. Yeah, actually, um, I found the song to be very interesting. Actually, uh, the, again, when you, it's a record that I didn't really have fresh in my mind. It's not not a record I listen to very often at all. So when this came on, I was like, oh, what's what's this? It kind of just right away jumped out. It's almost like when Priest did something similar. I forget which record it is. I think it was maybe uh, British Steel, where they did something like that. Uh, the Rage, that do 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 do. Do, 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 oh, do. don't get me started on the rage. I'll get my guitar. I love playing that. <laughs> yeah, like, so you know what I mean? It's almost like that idea where it's something totally out of nowhere came in. You know, it has a little riff in there. Din it, din it, din it, that priest does. And then this thing, it has that kind of reggae feel to it. And, you know, when you listen to Herman on the drums, it's really simple drums. He says kick, snare, kick snare but it's all hi-hat and those little fills that he does on the higher toms that makes it very reggae-ish right and uh great singing great singing and again Mateus is the one who's soloing on this one and great great stuff on there it's almost like he's doing a little bit of slide guitar almost in there or some kind of it has some really mm -hmm. interesting sounds in there that are coming out of the guitar when he's playing this one uh it's definitely something that appealed to me you know, because of my love of progressive music, I don't mind when something goes a little left field all of a sudden. It's almost like a like like Julian said, a refreshing part of the record all of a sudden because you're so used to that dan 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 like every song. It's like ah, this is good. This is a little you know breather in there because you know what's going to be coming after this. It's probably gonna be another like hit between the eyes kind of thing. See what I did there? Scorpions reference. So uh, <laughs> very nice. You know, so uh, yeah, I think it's a good song, good placement of the song in the album, and I I have nothing bad to say about this song. All right, Lonnie, have at it. No, I don't have a problem with it. To to you guys, probably chagrin, is that uh, <laughs> I, I think it it probably is it 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 does have good placement um, on the album to have this different type of feeling as a second song on the second side of the album. Um. I, I don't have as much of an issue with this as like like I did always somewhere I just felt like always somewhere was just like after another piece of me now you're bringing me down and yeah this one comes straight after can't get enough where you're like oh okay here we go second side of the album but it's it's different enough that I like it it's not too sappy you know and it and it doesn't really it, to me it really doesn't drag on it's just under four minutes. It's not like it's a five or six minute song that just kind of just drags on. I th I think it's a change of pace and it's, it's it's different enough that I like it. You know what I mean? I mean, I think I think you know there, there's songs like that out like that out there that it's just just enough of a change of pace from either the album or from the band that oh well that that's you know not exactly what I was expecting but it but it's still kind of fun. So I I, I think it's fine. I, I I actually don't have a problem with this one at all. I, I didn't think, I mean, it's, I, a, it's a decent song. I didn't think you were going to, you know. But, oh, thank uh, you. I, 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 I just <laughs> you said to, have at it, like you thought I, I was just gonna. Shrug. No, I mean, just go for it. I mean. I, okay. I didn't know. <laughs> we're, we're we're separated by a common language here. All right, so let's get into the title track, Mark. Let's start with you on that. Yeah. Well, this this song to me is prototypical Judas Priest. Like right when it starts off, I can just I can just imagine mm. seeing Rudolph. And uh, Mateus, they're doing the dun -da -da -dun, -da -da dun 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 together. You know that whole double guitar thing that they do at the top because that rhythm is just perfect for it. That, that one guy is doing the galloping guitar thing, the other guy is just strumming out the chord in behind it, and it has that kind of galloping, you know, rhythm to it. Almost something that Maiden would probably enjoy hearing. That kind of dun 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 rhythm to it. That rolling rhythm. Uh, 
it's 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 good. I mean, it's definitely a, a strong song to to put on there right after that sort of reggae-ish song that we had before there. And again, another good singing part in there. And it, once again, they drop back the guitars, make it a little bit more simpler in the verses, which is a you know a a good songwriting thing to do. It gives the singer more space to do different kinds of melodies, right? And they go back into that galloping part right after it. So it's, it's almost, again, like an A, B, A, B writing thing. And then they go to a C part for the soloing. And of course, this is Michael Shanker, without a doubt, yeah. on this playing these solos. I mean, right as soon as you hear it, it's like, yep, that's Michael right there. I mean, it, nothing wrong with Mateus, like I said, but there's just something when you hear him play that just kind of jumps out and leaps out of the speakers. Uh, good title track. I mean, if you're going to name a song your, your album after a song this you could do worse than doing this song i mean this song is great i think so um yeah it, it's good again sure could they have made it a little bit more razzmatazzy sure but i think this song i don't have as much issue with as far as that goes with the songwriting part of it uh it's good i think it's uh pretty strong and i, I like the I like the guitar playing on it nice lonnie i like it too um i I um I like I like the rhythm of it. I like the lyrics of it, um, the melody. I, I like it all. I, I think it's um, a, a really really strong track. Um, that you know, if I, if I was to start the I, that I I think it's a shame that it's just late in the album. But at the same time, if you get to think about it, that it's 1979 and and people were more into listening to the entire record and not just the first few songs like a cd or, or something like that so um i like it I, I i think it has good and actually i think it does have good placement coming from you know from after the reggae tune okay now we're going to go into into this and it kind of kind of lifts you back up in a different direction so i i like it i think i think it's a good I think it's a very strong title track and that the album's named after the song because it's it's very appropriate so um Really, really, really strong um, classic type Scorpion, Scorpion stuff. Excellent, Ken. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of funny that it falls so, yeah, like, you know so late in the album, uh, where the song is so darn good. Um, I, I, you know, it's one of, the, one of the songs that stick in my head on this album, um, and it's so late in the album. But it, you know, it, it, that's fine. It, it works. Um, at least it flows on that second side. You know perfectly. Uh, I, I love the galloping part of the song. Uh, I know Mark said Judas Priest, and it, yeah, maybe. Um, but uh, it, it's just a cool gallop. And then in between the each line, they have the little break. You know, guitar riff go on in there. Then sing another line, another guitar riff. Then it kicks into the you know, you know, it's a love drive uh, chorus, which is was really really well done. Um, and then, yeah, the soloing, Michael Schenker is, you know, fantastic stuff. Um, one thing about Scorpion is, I don't know if I said earlier, but, you know, they, they do write great riffs. All their songs have, always have a cool riff in it. Um, and it's not always one you, you, you heard before. They seem to come up with, you know, cool riffs in their songs that, that fit the song perfectly. Um, but, yeah, I love the song. Love Drive is one of the best. Yeah, it's really good title track from them uh, but it's old style scorpions for me which is probably why i probably mm. like it again it's closer to take it by force than it is to the stuff that emerges afterwards um mm. i called it a teutonic radar love um because it kind of <laughs> kind of the feel to it uh but it also made me think of early europe listen to that first europe album 1983 you can oh, see yeah. where they were getting some of their influences were from but i'm more familiar with their album than i am you know some of their sources so it's a cool track all right let's get into what is the last track on the album properly holiday and i like this one as much as i like winds of change which is you not, don't i don't, don't. <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 a great Whoa. song. I've just heard it way too yeah. much at this point. I can imagine back in 1979 or 80, when you've only heard it a few hundred times, um, it would have been, you know, enjoyable. But I got to say, I did like the demo 
on the 50th anniversary mm. edition more. And that's nine and a half minutes of holiday, <laughs> which uh, is kind of surprising. So I found that more refreshing because it was kind of different than the one I've heard for so many years. Lonnie, go back to you. I don't like it. Um, it's slow and it's long. And I I think Love Drive would have been a much better way to end the album than than this was you know i mean we took we i i just i just referenced how you know in 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 that time frame people were more into listening to the whole albums putting on the vinyl and listening to side one listening to side two as opposed to cds you know where you could pick and choose the tracks you want to listen to you know i i think love drive would have been a much better way to close out the album on a high note where holiday just seems to me is slow and just takes forever to get through in my opinion um i'm 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 not a fan of it but you know i but i get but i get why people are how about that you know everybody has everybody has their own. so so ken why don't, why don't it's a very you know, politician why don't, answer so so ken tell me why you like it. first of all you're wrong yeah secondly <laughs> uh, <laughs> You guys get to pick on me next month when I <laughs> revolve revolver and I love everything. Yeah, I mean, the first time I heard, yeah, the first time I heard the song, I loved it. Uh, I thought it was great. It is to me, it's one of the greatest, you know, Scorpion songs out there. I mean, it's it's it stands up there. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a kind of ba- it's a ballad, and uh, but I like how they take it. I mean, it's a nice, soothing, melodic, paced song. And then it, you know, then it, then you, then it kicks in a little bit, right? Um, gives it a little kick in the middle, um, with you know, they some you know, heavier guitars, and uh, but it's still so good. I mean, they do it in concert to this day, I believe. Um, so yeah, Holiday is. I I find nothing wrong with it. It it, I think it, the. the the length of it is just fine. It's just right. Um, no, like Julian said, the the bonus edition, uh, which was I don't like I said, was is it nine minutes? Um, it's it doesn't feel like nine minutes because I am you know enjoying it so much. It it, it just doesn't feel like it. Um, they could have put the nine minute version on here. I would have loved it. Um, uh, e- either way, this song is a, a great song, and it should have been the the lead off single in my opinion, uh, off of the album. No, on an album full of race cars, it ends with a tricycle. Mark, holiday. <laughs> tricycle. Well, yeah, okay, so, um, what do That's I think familiar. of holiday? Well, honestly, I don't mind the song. Uh, it's, it has some nice, uh, lead playing by Michael Shanker on here. Uh, he does some good classical work, like the acoustic guitar stuff there that he does. Um, it's, again, another attempt at a blockbuster ballad, but I'll tell you one thing that I agree with Ken, uh, Ken with. This song, if you want to really feel its impact, you have to listen to it live. I mean, when I remember when I went and saw Scorpions in 90, when they played this song, the whole place erupted. Like every lighter in the building was up. And, you know, Klaus just had to sing, you know, one or two lines. And then the rest of the building was singing the rest of it. He just held out his microphone and everybody sang to it. The power of the song is evident. It's when you listen to them play it live, everybody and their brother and their grandmother loves this song and is singing along with it. Does it have the same impact on me on record no because after you listen to it a few times you know yeah i can see some of the points that lonnie brings up that, you know it's a, it's a little slow you know it gets to it takes too long to get to the to the heavy parts but you know what you don't think about those things when you're in a lo- live environment watching them play it they kind of you know they even sometimes draw drag out this song even longer than what it is on record but nobody cares when when they're playing it live everybody loves it everybody gets into it but that's the problem is that that energy doesn't come off the record for me, right? Once I've experienced it live, listening to it on the album, it's kind of like when you listen to Kiss Alive, so I can get back to, I can talk to you now in a plane that you guys will understand here. When you listen to Kiss Alive 
and then you listen to like hotter than hell off the studio record it's just not the same thing that's how i kind of envisioned this you know Thank you, Mark, for putting it in terms that we can understand. We can all understand. <laughs> Kissling. <laughs> Kissling. Putting it in terms that it's alive. We can all, understand. all right. So let's talk about those uh, just quickly. Those two. Uh, those two demo tracks that were on the 50th anniversary. I've already given my thoughts on because uh, I love you and holiday. So, uh, Lonnie, your thoughts on the demos? I think they're fine. I, I think I think they're they're fun demos for for a de a deluxe edition. Um, you know, I, I, I think you know these dem demos that are that are put on these deluxe editions. I mean, how do you? I mean, they're, they're fun to listen to. Do you really go back and listen to them a whole lot? Maybe you know, de depending on your fandom, I guess. Um, I, I think they're fine. I think they're 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 both cool additions. You know, even though I didn't really tr trumpet my love for Holiday, I think that a nine minute version of of a song is is different and and it's you know can can be a, a different kind of lesson when you're when you're in the mood for for some for some different stuff so i i, I think they're cool additions to be marked demos yeah i mean again it, it was pretty good i mean you can definitely tell that is a demo the production is obviously massively different from the album tracks but you know that the songwriting is there it's good and I, I think I might actually uh, agree with Julian on this. I think that if they would have took this and brought it to, to Dieter and said, listen, we want to put this on the record. And I don't even think that they might have had to dump coast to coast. But if they did, I, I think it still would have been a good idea to switch it with this one. But you could have even maybe left coast to coast and have this done up to, you know, album levels of production and maybe add in a few other things to make it more album worthy but i definitely think it is the stronger song or it could have been the stronger song on it uh the the demo of holiday i mean you know it's a nine minute version of the song all the things i talked about for the six minute version applied to this i mean it it's just uh you know it doesn't apply it doesn't hit me anywhere as much as the live version and the live version sometimes i've heard them do words this long like nine minutes long because they'd always do california let me hear you and all like toronto let me you know do all those things in between and they'd stretch out verses and stuff like that so you know nine minute versions were nothing surprising in a live capacity but you know a nine minute version of a song on an album probably wasn't a good idea yeah i think coast to coast should have been the introduction to a nine minute version of holiday that would have been hell. Um, Ken, demos. <laughs> okay. Wow. They, they may have Ken. done that. They, you know, they <laughs> might have you. done that in concert. It's possible. I'll have to look at the <laughs> set list. But uh, they they play both. They do. <laughs> they do. Is it? Is it? Yeah. See, yeah. It's a fact of fact. You know, I said uh, yeah. it. There me. you go. I mean, uh, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. It really doesn't surprise me. I, You know what? And I would have thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm sure I did because I saw them. A couple of times in concert back in the day so which uh, i wanted but, to ask you did you go to the 1999 concord show with uh, motley crew because i just saw on youtube uh, that they have the scorpion set from that show and since i didn't pay that much attention to it when i was there because i was there for crew um i'm gonna watch that later i saw them on the blackout tour and then i think the uh, love at first sting tour but i saw them t those two years in a row um one of them was a day on the green and it had also, I think a lot of other great Iron Maiden was it on on that. Uh, yeah, you I saw them Iron in the Maiden in the primo for, years. Iron Maiden, and then the Scorpions came on, and then we had I don't know. It was a great show. I, that, I don't know if that was the one with Metallica too, but I don't know. It was, it was quite. If a it was eighty four, then it probably wasn't. They, they did eighty five, I think. It was it was quite a con. I, yeah, I can't remember exactly who was everyone, but uh, they were definitely both there in that show um yeah so yeah i didn't see them late with molly crew it's just those two years uh, in the mid 80s uh, which were just fantastic i saw them two or three times but um yeah the demos because i love you is it, a good song yeah they could have finished it up and and stuck it on there they, they probably could have you know replaced always summer or or whatever um on that um or just added it as another song 
you know. Um, and holiday demo version, yeah, I thought it was, it's cool. And I talked about it a little earlier. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of long, but like I said, it it felt like it, it goes pretty fast otherwise. Um, and I just love the song anyway. So there you have it. All right, as we start to wrap up this episode, let's go with our three favorites and our three least favorites. Ken, lead us off. Oof. Well, I'm gonna okay. My three favorites is kind of tough, but I'm gonna go with. <clears throat> I'm going to go with, oh, geez, Love Drive, um, Holiday <laughs> is another one. And then uh, it's kind of tough. Uh, I'm just going to say Love You Sunday Morning is the, is the third one. I mean, I like pretty much the whole thing, so it's hard to pick one. All right, we'll come back around for your least favorites in a minute. Um, I'm going to immediately go with Can't Get Enough just because it really is different. I do really like another piece of meat it just it's just fantastic and i gotta go with the title track but it's actually very difficult to pick three favorites off this because there are at least six songs that i do really like mark um i would go with uh loving you sunday morning like i said i, I really loved how that song kicked off and made me pick up my guitar um is there anybody there i really like that i think that whole change of pace song was much needed on this record and it's one of those ones that has stuck in my mind and and love drive i think that that's a you know a good title track song is uh always needed on a record especially like this one so i uh, those are my three for sure lonnie um i'm gonna agree with julian my three favorite are can't get enough another piece of meat and the title track love drive Woo-hoo, um, your beer. all three of them great <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> ken least favorite or favorites you can go up to three if you can actually i can't you know uh all right i, I dare you <laughs> i'll go with oh boy it's, it's it's very difficult um i'm gonna just say always somewhere um even though i i do like that too um i'm just gonna pick that as one <laughs> i'm not gonna pick anything else all i right. like it all fair enough mark um I don't know if I could pick three. I'll I'll pick two, uh, which is uh, always somewhere. I think is one of those ones that, you know, isn't exactly the strongest one. And and I'm gonna pick Holiday too. I mean, like I said, that song doesn't translate to me on record as much as it does live. There you go, Lonnie. Um, I think we're all gonna agree. Always somewhere. Um, I'm gonna go. I'd say Holiday, and I'm gonna say coast to coast just because of the fact that i just feel like it's unfinished and it was just again i just feel like it was either either lazy to put on there that we didn't write lyrics for it or if we wanted to do an instrumental we could have done something a whole lot greater yeah so i nearly agree with lonnie uh always somewhere obviously um coast to coast should not be on there i was pretty vehement in my opinion about it it's mm. just not worthy um and if i had to pick a third it would be holiday but i wouldn't pick it I would leave my picks at two, just because Holiday is kind of one of their core catalog songs, so it just doesn't feel right to, to shit can it in such a way. Let's wrap up with, you know, just thoughts on singles. Um, well, and we'll have to close with the cover. So, you know, you pick two sure. singles for the album, which would be the songs that you would pick? And um, Holiday was not a single A-side anywhere from this album, which really... That um, makes sense. Boggles my mind. So, Mark. Um, well, if I pick it uh, according to what the songs that I like, um, I would probably pick different songs. But I think if I was to pick it logically, I think another piece of meat would be a, a single. It's short. It's impactful. It's very uh scorpions you know like when you think of scorpions that's the kind of songs that you think of but if you're going to go with a second song you know how they always say oh open with a put out a big rock and single then put a ballad next um i would have probably put is there anybody there instead because i think that it's melodic enough that you could put it in that position but it's not so slow and dirgy that you won't that you'll lose people's attention i think that's a it would have been a strong single i think lonnie what about you my two singles um, be another piece of meat and and loving you Sunday morning. I, I, again, if you go back to a, to a uh, to a, you know, a formula with 
with with singles that you you know you 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 start with a with a heavier song and you go with the slower song as your second one. And loving you and while none of us picked loving you Sunday morning as one of our three favorite songs on the album. It is a strong tune. It's a strong radio tune. So I, I, I still think it would have been a, a good second single. Like Mark said, you know, I'm not picking my favorite songs here and I pick two singles. I think so, I'm picking songs I think would have would have done the best as singles. So mm-hmm. um, another piece of meat and loving you Sunday morning. All right, Ken, you're up to bat. I did pick Lonnie. I did pick loving you Sunday morning. There you go. Three, but you weren't listening. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Oh, sorry. I, I wasn't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you were busy listening to uh, Coast to Coast at the time. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, Love You Sunday Morning and, and and Holiday are the two songs. They could have flipped whichever way as a single. Yeah, maybe it would have made, made more sense. Like Mark said, Loving You Sunday Morning and the, more of the rocker first and then the, the ballad next, you know. So Holiday was, would be second for me. I agree with Ken, uh, but I, it should definitely be Loving You Sunday Morning. If that's your lead-off track on the album, that's your lead-off single um, as well, since it, both are kind of doing the same job um, to introduce the listener to the album. And then Holiday, without a doubt. Um, it, it, it's just enough to be a good crossover hit, uh, or at least better than some of the choices that I think they made. I mean, Love Drive, yeah, it's okay as a single. Another piece of meat I think is a really bad choice, just because the title's going to put people off before they ever get to the subject subject matter um and what was the other one is anyone is an, is there anybody there that's a, okay as a single choice all right the album cover caused a lot of consternation in the united states of america for some reason in yeah. fact <laughs> and it, it was another strom thurmond um hypnosis. creation from hypnosis yeah. and it's really rather striking and odd and i i did read his comments about it and i thought yeah that is really weird um what an odd concept to come up with so ken you've actually got a show and tell but what do you think of the cover and do you think that harms it because yeah. i think the alternative covers i think it did got awful yeah the alternative is good as well um uh, like what nigel of uh, spinal tap it's it's just it's a not sec you know it's sexy cover it's a sex cover. No, it's sexist. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, I think if I walked past this album, which I probably did, um, and saw this, I was like, what the hell? What is it? What is it? And, you know, it, it, all it has is it shows the, uh, what, the the song titles and that sort of thing. And Band a members. Little, a little, yeah, a little comment about you know, it's a you know, great album or whatever, Melody Maker, I think it is. Um, but yeah, you come across like, okay, what is this? Red? And it's a red shrink wrap to cover it, uh, the front and back, um, because, you know, it you know, it was it was this um, at first, you know, <laughs> the bubble gum uh, and that stuff. But, you know, the back was not so bad, but um, yeah, I guess it was too so um but yeah i mean it's a piece of art um and i guess the story goes with this out uh, with this hypnosis came to them after they already had the songs in the album you know done the album was done they came to them they laid out all this the guy artist whatever what's his name again strong Julian? storm ferguson storm, yeah, strong. he what came out laid all these crazy you know he has a lot of crazy album covers uh, and but the, and then they picked this and they saw this one and then it's like oh wait a minute you know if it kind of fits you know they're in the car whatever backseat of the car um, and you know love drive yeah you know it's going on a love drive you know so that was the best one that fit that song um, to to use I guess because um, whatever but yeah to me this I think it affected sales I'm sure going into the you know and looking at the artwork and that, that's part of it is actually seeing the artwork of an album at least back then um when you're gonna pick it you know, like I, i'm sure there's albums i bought just for the artwork back then <laughs> um back in the day and then there's some i probably didn't um, but anyway uh yeah it's crazy and it's amazing that this shrink wrap is still on this original release here yeah so so how many mm-hmm. albums did the Scorpions have problems with their cover art for? In Trance, <laughs> uh, Virgin Killer, Virgin Killer, Animal Magnetism, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, as Tim, it's, it's kind of like smell the glove, right, from Smile Tap. <laughs> um, and and love first I don't know, Love at First Sting maybe I think yeah, too. Yeah, had did. had a problem. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but yeah, they, they they were never doing it on purpose, and so they swear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Well, there's we're actually a, just, you know. there's actually an important point to bring up here in regards to this. Being that Scorpions are a German band, and I know that this is a comment I also heard from my own mother too, is that in Germany, especially, nudity and stuff like that is not looked the same way as it is in America. My mom always said that she thought Americans are very prudish with the whole thing with that, because she said that if you go into look in German magazines, like even normal store-bought magazines you flip through there and there's pages where just topless women in there all the time in there you can see it in there all the time it's not a big thing in german things to see that you know what i mean and i mean even klaus mine and said it himself because he didn't understand what the problem was he goes it's just sex drugs and rock and roll and he knows he even said himself that he doesn't understand the, the the problem with americans with showing that kind of art on there but you know I'm not saying that it's right to put on the cover like they did for Virgin Killer. That to me is going a little too far in my opinion. But I think the problem with it was the mentality. But I'll tell you this. If they didn't clue in by the time they did Love It First Sting, then honestly, there's something going on with these guys. Because, you know, if you do it once, okay, it's a mistake. You do it twice, okay, I'm going to get a little suspicious. But if you're doing it three and four and five times, making putting covers that people are again, having issue with, I think you should probably learn your lesson by that point. But again, I think it all boils back to the whole difference in culture. Europe is much different place, especially back then, than America was at that time. Still is. Lonnie, thoughts on the cover? And you're on mute. (laughs) I'll just start that thought over. I'm muted. Um, I mean, it's different. I can see why... You know, they had to to cover it to to make a change or to cover it. Um, it's I don't know. It, it it's so different to, to look at it to in you have you have to look at it in a in a nineteen seventy nine window of when it came out to, I think. You know and you can't look at it through 2021 lens because everything's sold in a paper bag to not offend someone. Yeah. Right, and, that, and that's the problem, and, that, and that's the thing. Well, yeah, I mean, and and that's a, and that's another another topic of conversation because people are offended by by cartoon skunks or, you know, or at the same time, what was on the Grammy Sunday night is okay at the same time. That, that that's yeah. another that's another that's topic another. for another show that I don't really think we want to get into and touch. But at the same time, if we're going to talk about an album cover that that is controversial and has some some sexual overtones to it, you know, if a cartoon skunk is offensive, well, I think I think this is offensive, you know. <laughs> that's that's my opinion. Better? Which one so, do you like better, there? But I don't think either. But but the one on the right's no better though. The one on the right's terrible though too. No, that's that's just a hack job. The alternative. That's a terrible version. album cover. It looks like that something I like, looks like something I drew cover. in seventh yeah. grade when I was bored or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that that's that's no good either. <laughs> so, and and especially in a time like 1979, like you said, Ken, a lot of albums were bought solely on what they what they look like because you're not buying a, a little CD. You're buying some, something big and bold and like, oh, look at this. Mm-hmm. So. To put that out there, knowing in the back of your mind, it's it, it's gonna spark some controversy, and 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 then getting to cover it covered up, and you have this red label, and just like no no one's buying that bait, not knowing what it is. Unless you're a fan of the Scorpions, you're not buying that red foil album cover. You're just not. You're not. You're not buying that on an impulse. Oh, look at this! I I gotta have this. No one's. Doing that. So, and I think it's just being smarter than than what they were at the end. Of the yeah, yeah. I, I cover doesn't bother me. I, in fact, I, it it bothers me more the alternative than what it's replacing because it's it's just art, um, and it may or may not 
project the image or the message that they want and I don't really care again to me it is always about the music but flipping through you know record bins in stores over the decades I've always stopped when there's been an interesting cover uh, yeah <laughs> you know yeah. it has been the cover that drew me to bands like Angel it is covers you know come on Electric Ladyland that had done that in the past uh, who who was it uh, was it Blind Faith did the other one oh, yeah the, right um, you know, yep. so there there have yeah, been a, a a lot of questionable album covers in the past, but I don't think this is one of them. And I, I think Version Killer certainly was. So this to me is just you know like oh haha ha, I get it or that's stupid. You know, it, no outrage required. Um, but there you go. Every culture is different, and obviously in Europe there is less of a, or there was historically, less of a, a big deal about it, um, and that's just the way it is. All right, there we go. That's our thoughts on the Scorpions' Love Drive. Um, thank you for picking that, Ken, and thank you everyone for voting on it. I'm looking forward to digging into Velvet Revolver next month. That is, I've actually been listening to a fair amount of Guns N' Roses lately, Lonnie. I saw that. I, I saw that. I, I got the deluxe mm -hmm. edition out of Appetite, and then I went into Illusions. So um, nice. I really enjoyed it. But I'm going to wrap up my, my enjoyment of this Scorpions episode by watching that 1999 concert that I didn't pay full attention to. Um, so that's our thoughts on love drive what do you think of it what's your favorite scorpions album when did you get into them are you still into them because they are still around they've been retiring forever um <laughs> sounds you know, like someone else made <laughs> yeah no they're, they're like Cher. they've been retiring so long and mickey d's now in the band which is fantastic because he's a great drummer mm -hmm. so they are not my favorite german band that's halloween but there we go all right so for mark ken lonnie myself thanks for joining us thanks for watching and thanks for your support and we'll see you next time Thank you for watching or listening to this episode. Be sure to subscribe to us, like us, or even leave us a review. You can find us and join the conversation on Facebook. <laughs>